Welcome to our webinar, How to Break Through Public Speaking Blocks and Get Out of Your Own Way, by Cher Gunderson of Master Your Accent. My name is Ryan Kauf and I will be your host today. I direct the Wisconsin Small Business Development Center, or SBDC, at UW-Green Bay. The Wisconsin SBDC is a statewide network of resources working with small business owners and their executives to facilitate their business's growth and improvement and to help launch successful new companies. The no-cost business advising and low-cost leadership development training at the Wisconsin SBDC at UW-Green Bay is funded in part through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration, also known as the SBA. Our website is uwgb.edu slash sbdc. We call these monthly no-cost 30-minute webinars our Secrets to Success series designed to help small business owners and their executive team members increase their financial success. At the conclusion of this webinar, we will share the upcoming webinar topics, and we encourage you to consider registering. We thank Mickey and Tim from First Business Bank and Michael Wentworth of TMR Associates for their partnership in developing and promoting these monthly webinars and for their dedication to small business success. And there's Michael Wentworth there. After the webinar, you will be emailed a link to a recording of this webinar. And during the webinar, you're invited to ask questions at any time. Please use the menu along the right side of your screen indicated here in the red circle. Type your question and hit enter. As soon as I see it, I will make note of it for the presenter to address toward the end of our webinar. And now I'd like to turn it over to our expert presenter this month, Cher Gunderson of Master Your Accent. Cher? Hello, everyone. Hello, Ryan. I am really excited to be here today. And not only do we have a lot of participants from the U.S., we have people from across the globe joining us that I've been communicating with who are also looking to break through their own public speaking blocks and really reach the audience that needs to hear them. And I know that a lot of you are on this webinar today for that specific purpose. And whether you are in management, whether you own your own business, um, whether you are looking to reach larger audiences through maybe uh, if you raise funds for a nonprofit organization, I have got some really, really great tools for you. Now, when I listen to somebody I, who's an expert, my question is, what makes them an expert? So I want you to know that we all, as human beings, I'm aware of, have challenges in our lives that can create some lack of confidence. And I'm no exception to that. So I am here to share with you the fact that I have not always been able to be able to be a public speaker. And although I built Master Your Accent from the ground up, it wasn't always that easy for me. You see, when I was in my 20s, up to that point, whatever goal I had wanted to, to um, master, I usually was able to do that. And things came to quite a halt. I no longer was able to reach those goals. And I was diagnosed with severe clinical depression. So the, the idea that I couldn't be in social situations, I didn't even want to be with friends. I didn't want to even be with family in some instances. And what did I do to break free of that is what, what you might be wondering. I knew that there was a spark, an ember inside of me that needed to come through. So I surrounded myself with mentors and professionals who had the tools and shared these techniques with me to reframe my mind and how I could change the way that I was perceiving those, that lack of confidence, that lack of self-esteem. So that's what I'm here to share with all of you today 
no matter where you're at in your life or in your business or in your job, I have some tools that are going to help you to get to that next level of where you want to be with that confidence in public speaking. So I'm going to share with you these five strategies of breaking um, through your public speaking blocks and getting out of your own way. So just um, having a little bit of trouble advancing to the next slide. Okay, so the first strategy is to create connection. And you, to create connection, you want to embrace um, your passion, your story. And Ryan, are you able to see the screen okay? I just want to make sure that everybody's viewing the same screen that I am. Yep, you're good to go, Cher. You're great. Thanks. Okay. So your passion is your story. And whoever you are, you have a unique story. And I shared a little bit of my story with you. Um, and that's what you can do with your audience, no matter who it is. You want to have a purpose. And that purpose is going to be either informational or um, motivational, and that, or it can be both. And you want to have, you want to know how that information is going to help your audience. So that's what you want to make sure that you create that connection through sharing your passion and your story. And even if you're in a job that maybe you're not so zestful about or excited about, or you have maybe a business and ideas that you want to implement in a business that you're starting, or a project or an initiative that you're you're creating and there's a little bit of hesitation about that, um, there's a way to tap into that passion that's in you and you need to look at why it is that you got involved in that in the first place. And vulnerability is the third thing that creates connection and that's something you want to embrace. And, you know, I shared a little, I was a little bit vulnerable when I shared with you the idea that I was diagnosed with that severe depression in my 20s. And those are some things that vulnerability is what makes your audience connect with you. They want to know that you are a real person. That's what they want to know. So the, excuse me, the next thing you want to do is identify and break through your emotional blocks. Now, the third thing is mastering verbal and nonverbal communication tools. And those include posture and breathing and voice dynamics and concise wording. Fourthly, you want to organize and be familiar with your content. You want to have a purpose. And again, I said that can be informational or motivational. You want to have an outline with an introduction, a body. Now, it's important for you to have a story and anecdotes to share when you are giving your speech. And I gave a little bit of that to you in the beginning. You want to summarize what it is that you gave your audience, and you want to logically transition between your ideas. And I want to go back a slide. When I talk about posture and breathing and voice dynamics and wording, I'm not going to be able to give you the, the plethora of information that I would in the coaching and training sessions that I offer, um, but there will be an opportunity for you to learn more information if you're interested in gaining more information. Lastly, the fifth strategy to break through your public speaking box and get out of your own way is, yes, okay, practice. Practice. We all need to practice. And we're going to talk about something that when you think, well, most of those public speakers who are great at it don't actually practice. I'm going to share something with you that is absolutely contradicts that. So you want to say your speech out loud, tape it, listen to yourself, and when you feel it's ready, present it to somebody that you trust. Present it to someone that you trust. Um, and listen to that feedback that they give you give yourself feedback and make changes on that as well. So, um, just having a little bit of a 
a problem going to the next slide. I'm trying to have you be able to see me at the same time as you can see the slide, but it doesn't seem like it's allowing me to do that. That's all right. So the four emotional blocks that keep you stuck in their freeing truths are, number one, if I'm at a loss for words, I should can the whole speech. Actually, that is not true, and the truth is that when you lose your train of thought, it's okay to pause. You can recover by saying something such as, what I was going to say was, and then you regain your topic. You can also finish your sentence, pause, and ad-lib the rest of the speech. The second uh, block, the emotional block, is I'm not as good as so-and-so when they speak. And the truth is that you do have your own, you have a speaking style unique to you, and you have ideas that are unique to you and mannerisms that are your own mannerisms. Can that whole idea, you know, that idea that you have to compare yourself to somebody else. And it's human nature, we all do it, but there's ways to really get in touch with not having to do that, get in touch with being confident about your own competencies. Number three as an emotional block to move beyond is the good public speakers don't have to practice or put forth effort. They're just naturals at it. And the truth is, uh, most public speakers have put forth a lot of effort, they've practiced a lot, and they've gotten to that point to be as good, okay, as good as they are because of putting forth the practice. Number four as an emotional block is that I won't get the return on my investment of the time and energy it takes to prepare. Baloney, <laughs> I say to that because the when you, if you're invested in what you want somebody else to tell you about how you're speaking, that doesn't free you up to actually share your passion with the audience that you're speaking to. What do they need from you that's, that, that you're giving them? Everybody has competitors in your market. I have competitors in my market. The reason that people come to me and that I work with the clients I do is because there's a connection between my experience, my personality, um, my interests, and I have a market that wants to hear what I have to say. Even though there's millions of public speaking coaches out there, the same is true for you. There are audiences and target markets that need to hear your unique experience, your passions in your interests and connect with you so that they can really truly take away what it is that you have to offer them. And freeing, what a practice does is it, uh, when you practice and you put that investment in, it allows you to free yourself up to be spontaneous. Your mind isn't able to neurologically be spontaneous if it's searching for the next word or the next topic and trying to organize as you go. Five nonverbal and nonverbal communication excellence tools is the next area that I want to share with you to break through your public speaking blocks. We talked about the, uh, the, the first one was connecting and embracing your purpose, your passion, and being vulnerable. The second thing was identifying and moving beyond those emotional blocks. The third was um, we talked about those truths, and now we're talking about these nonverbal and verbal communication excellence tools to gain engagement from your audience. So let's talk about posture, expression, voice, dynamics, and concise wording and transitions. Posture, first of all, is important in that um, the crown of the head is lifted up, okay, as I'm sitting here, the crown of my head is lifted up, my shoulders are open and relaxed, 
I really wish that I was standing right now. I, I'm going to engineer this in a way that the next webinar probably I can be standing, but I love to stand when I speak because it just conveys a great energy. But the rib cage is still lifted from my hips, and the pelvic girdle, the hips are neutral, so that you're not when you're when you're standing, you're not um, tilting tilting back because that wreaks havoc on your back when you're standing like that. Your knees are nice and supple and your arms are to the side to convey confidence and openness. So when my arms are to the side, it conveys a sense of confidence, creates a sense of openness and engagement, invites engagement. Secondly is facial expression. So you are going to be able to share your passions when you show facial expression through the use of your eyebrows, your cheekbones being open, the tilt of your head, and gestures are important. You've seen me using gestures while we're talking today. Also, use of space is important. If you're in the room and you can move around where the audience isn't connected to a webcam, and you are not have to be stationary. You can move around the room to, to keep audience engagement, keep eye contact with other participants. Number four as a, a verbal communication tool is voice dynamics. So when we talk about voice dynamics, we talk about volume and pitch change. You need to be loud enough and to get loud enough I'm using what's called abdominal thoracic breathing, where I'm breathing from my belly, and that gives me enough capacity in my lungs to drive through your vocal folds. And that's what causes volume, is pressure underneath the vocal folds driven by the lung system. My voice is not monotone as I'm speaking today to you, because that really doesn't engage the audience and when my voice has very little variability in pitch, it just doesn't seem to be interesting. <laughs> That's pitch change. You noticed that I slow down and I pause at certain spots. And that's because I want to highlight certain information and I want to bring your attention to certain points. Be comfortable pausing. Do you know that it's a known fact that humans do not like silence? And it's okay to get comfortable with it. Replace those negative thoughts about silence in your mind with supportive thoughts. And silence doesn't mean that there's something wrong. Um, so concise wording and transitions is very important. That's the fifth verbal component to move you through your own public speaking blocks, to get out of your own way, is if you aren't prepared, you tend to use interjections such as, um, well, you know, uh, you know what I mean? And that takes the listener's ears out of being engaged with you and takes them away from what they are really wanting to gain from what you have to offer them. So replace those interjections with pauses. Express your thoughts in clear sentences in a logical fashion and avoid getting sidetracked. Okay, whoa, we are through already with that. Um, so I just want to back up for a moment and let you know that when you are, um, when you talk about those pauses, what happens is the listener isn't able to, they get sidetracked. So the other thing that happens with the listener when you're speaking is if you aren't organized and you haven't prepared the content, logically transitioning between these points, their brain has to either be on the rational side or the emotional side. So your job is to organize the information, present it in a way that interests them, way that they can absorb 
because then they can focus on that emotional part of being engaged with you. That's what keeps their engagement so that their rational brain isn't thinking, what is she going to say next? What did she just say? What is her point? That's what it is a concise, organized speech so that they can be engaged and connect with you. We have, in summary, talked about how to embrace and share your passion, your purpose, and your vulnerability, how to identify and bring emotional blocks, master those five verbal and nonverbal communication excellence tools, be familiar with your content, and then practice, practice, and practice some more, okay? And that return on the investment will come through because the competence level that you start to internalize will energy, energetically come through to your audience because an audience is attracted to somebody who's confident. I want to say that again. An audience is attracted to somebody who is confident in their skills. So that was what I had to share with you. So now connect with me on Facebook, connect with me on Twitter. I want you to take advantage of the free offers that we have at MasterYourAccent.com. There's, if you speak English as a second or other language, there's a Transform Your Accent, Transform Your Life kit. There's also a Three Simple T Variations kit, How to Reduce the Likelihood of Being Asked What Did You Say kit at MasterYourAccent.com. I have a free Speak Up and Stand Out for Visibility and Success kit that's also a download, and that is at MasterYourAccent.com, Public Speaking, and that has obviously jam-packed with tools, ways to obtain speaking engagements, 17 tips for presenting concisely, dates for connecting with your passion, multiple templates for presenting message, solutions for voicing your passion, speaking, standing out. That's what we want. And steps to attract clients through speaking in person via video and via written copy, and then 11 activities and secrets to build your confidence that we just can't get into today. So I also have an offer uh, the training that I offer is the Rock Your Audience with Power, Passion, and Purpose, Individualized Private Training Sessions, and those are an impactful program with one-to-one -one training that will empower you. And those sessions include straightforward public speaking tools that will tap into your unique message and personality, empower you to engage your audience and establish the credibility. The credibility is really important. And those are for one-hour, one-to-one sessions and individualized feedback that I provide for you in implementing these methods in a way that resonate with, with your heart and with your soul. That's what we want to capture. And the personalized coaching is for developing a theme for your speech, for allowing your audience to enjoy your speech rather than have their brains working overtime like I had spoke about. And it's, it's the coaching to tell your story, your story. And that's a critical component for connecting to your audience. They want to hear your story. I help clients craft the speech. I give them support and feedback, and I'll provide you the foundation for you to be spontaneous, to be relaxed when you give your speech, to be confident. And we provide editing recommendations to most effectively pull your audience into your message. Okay, those editing recommendations are also critical. The wording and where you put things is important. Feedback and modeling for maximizing your voice inflection. Pausing, cadence for infusing passion and personality into your presentation. And that's all at MasterYourAccent.com, private training, public speaking package that we are offering uh, with a bonus audio download, the Speak Up and Stand Out for Visibility and Success 
audio, and that is an hour's worth of jam-packed information with, um, from, I was invited to, uh, to a telesummit called Tap into the Power of Authentic Coaching with 24 leading coaches that are showing you how to be yourself and build a wildly profitable business online. And that, those training sessions are offered right now at 40% off the regular tuition. And that, I do have to close that offer at Sunday, uh, midnight, September 7th. And that's $419. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking your time out today. I would love to connect with you about your stories. I'd love to talk to you further to see if our services and your needs, I would love to, to connect with me at share at masteryouraccent.com and we can connect there as well. Sure, thank you so much. Um, the presentation was excellent and really packed with some information. Um, if you, we have time for probably one or two questions, and I want to get this one to you first. Um, the question is, how can you overcome embarrassment of people looking at you? And the comment um, that came with that question was, I get more nervous knowing that people are turning to look at me when I'm talking. Um, so again, how can you overcome embarrassment of people looking at you? Yes, and there is, with most of the clients that I see, that is in question, and it's something that I work with in what's called thought record. And I would advise um, for the participant that's interested in knowing more, visit the blog at MasterYourAccent.com, and there's blogs on creating thought records, and it's, I think that specific article is called Leadership, How to Engage and Connect, and there's four parts in that series. That's where I would start, but my training is, is definitely goes deeper and works from the inside out on how to not even worry if somebody is looking at you, because we, we mind read and sometimes our mind reading is inaccurate. So that's what causes the anxiety, Ryan. Thank you. Um, one last question uh, real quick. Um, you gave us a lot of good, in great information. If you had to pick um, one place to start, and I'm probably asking this very generally as opposed to everybody, you know, it's probably more on a case-by-case -case basis. But if you had to play, pick one place to start, what would you improve on first? If I had to pick one place to start, what would I improve on? It would be my belief in that my message is what people need to hear. That's, that's critical right there. If somebody can really believe uh, that their message is what people need to hear, that can help break through the extraneous things that get in the way. Great. Thank you, Cher. Very much appreciate uh, your message. So thank you again. Yes, you're very welcome, Ryan. Thank you so much for inviting me. All right. Um, next month, we have our webinar featuring Rick Balzan of Balzan HR, and he will be presenting on how to hire right for your business. In October, Brian Schwaller of Ecomanity will present how to offset rising energy costs. Register for these and all upcoming webinars at uwgb.edu slash sbdc. And we also have several past webinar recordings there on sales, marketing, business ownership, leadership, and professional development. In closing, I would very much again like to thank Cher Gunderson for Master Your Accent. Thank you, Cher. Uh, Mickey and Tim at First oh, Business yeah. Bank, and Michael Wentworth of TMR Associates, the B2B appointment setting company. And thank you all for attending. Now, go break through your public speaking blocks. Have a great day. This concludes our webinar. Goodbye.